Hello friends. A huge part of troubleshooting problems inside of applications is understanding not just what the users were experiencing when the time the application broke, but finding exactly where inside of your application code those broken parts live. In this video, I'm going to show you my debugging path to figuring those things out and how you can use it to get your users and applications back stable again. Let's jump in and check it out. So here we have an application that's having a ton of problems. We can see some errors already on the screen. And when we jump into Sentry, we can see all the issues that have been automatically created every time a user runs into these problems inside of the app. Now, when I jump into one of these, we can see a ton of context about what's going wrong inside of the application at that time. One of the first things I check out inside of this view is this auto fix section on the right hand side. This is going to take in what's wrong as well as information from the trace, feed it into AI and try to come up with a root cause. And when we go in here, we can watch it starting to process that information. It's going to take my application code and it's going to try to find solutions to that problem. And it'll even pull a PR if we want it to, to merge that code into my repo. This is a great example of how we make the information that we're capturing as part of Sentry actionable so we can help you get applications back up and running. Now this is going to run in the background as we continue to debug our application. The next place I like to dive into is the stack trace because it lets me see exactly where in my application code this problem is actually happening at. From here, I go into the session replay that'll let me see an exact view into how the user was experiencing the problems as they navigated out the application. So I can see all of their interactions and exactly how they created that problem. This works right alongside the breadcrumbs that show that same interaction path, including things like console logs, fetch calls, and ultimately that error that came back through. But one of my favorite areas is to dig into traces and spans because this will show me the actual communication flow throughout my application and which component of my architecture was having the problem. So when I go in here, I can see the overall trace and those individual span communication points. So I can see the navigation start and a bunch of stuff happens inside of nav, but ultimately it fails when we start to reach out to the API for our products. When I expand this section, I can go down and I can see the actual API call that's happening that triggers the failure. In this case, we're seeing a no such table product error message that comes back through. Now this is a pretty simple issue overall. It's a Next.js application, so the API is pretty close to the front end, but we'd have the same functionality in a distributed application, maybe like a Vite with a bun server running somewhere else. We could still see those traces as they move throughout that entire distributed application. But again, this is a fairly simple example, so let's jump into one that's a little bit more complicated. We'll go back into our issues view, hit our error fix project, and let's go into this login API error. Now again, we get all the same information as before. I can go in and watch a session replay that shows how the user got here. I can see the breadcrumbs they interacted with. But what I want to jump into is the traces and spans for it so I can see that communication flow. Now we're still seeing all the same spans from before, the API errors that are happening because we haven't fixed those yet. But we're getting two additional ones on the bottom. Now this first one is a custom span that I've created for auth.login. When I expand this out and I click on it, I can see the error message that's coming through that it's unauthorized. But because this is a custom span, I've added additional metrics and additional information onto it to make debugging easier. So when I scroll down into the different sections, I can go into the trace details and expand data. And I can see there's this auth header property in here. This is going to be important later on. But I can attach any information I want here. I can attach metrics or, again, troubleshooting information that make it easier to figure out what's going wrong when something does break. Now, as we continue the communication flow, we can see this one failed because it ultimately reached out to an HTTP server on the login API. And when it went down, it hit a span called errorfix.login.api, which is another custom span that I've created. When we look at this one, we're seeing an authentication header mismatch. So remember, we were sending an authentication header before called authentication. But when we scroll down inside of this one, we can see additional properties I've attached, and we're expecting an authorization property. Now, in this case, again, it's a fairly simple example, but I've attached all this information ahead of time to make debugging much easier. All of these are custom spans that I've created that I can query. And again, I can attach metrics or whatever information I want to make it easier to debug services later on. Now, I've talked a lot about querying. If I wanted to be able to query more information, I can come into traces here and I can get a lot of search availability here. So if I come in and type in auth, for example, I can see everything that has auth contained inside of it. I can come into trace samples and I can start to expand these to dig into more information around the traces and the individual spans associated with it. I can even change the visualization up here with different parameters if I want to and adjust the aggregations as I see fit. 
When I have a query that I really like here, I can turn them into alerts. I can also save them as dashboard views that I can use inside of overall service dashboards if I want to. So it makes it really easy to get the information I want out. They make it actionable so I can go and solve real problems for our users. Now I mentioned before that we'd go back and check out the auto fix thing. Let's go back to issues, jump back into error fix again, and hit the original issue we started with. Now when I go in here, I can see it's found a solution to the problem. When I expose this now, we're seeing all the thought processes that it went through and all the key points that it found as part of debugging. Ultimately, it found that the API route tries to query the database using the wrong table name, and it even gives me the right database query to solve this problem. So I could either make that change manually or have it come in and pull in a PR to actually solve this problem for me. So that path of diving into an issue, looking at autofix to get some guidance on what could be wrong, viewing the user experience, and then diving into the traces and spans to be able to see the end-to-end -end flow of communication is a great way to understand exactly where applications are breaking down and how you can get them back up and running. We'd love for you to try any of this out. If you have any questions, let me know. We'd love to help you out. Talk soon.